Good morning, and welcome to this webcast about setup and first configuration of Exchange 2013 RTM. My name is Jennifer, and I'll be the English dubber for this webcast made by Fabrizio Volpe, Microsoft MVP on Directory Services. In the agenda, we have the preparation of Active Directory, the installation of the software mandatory for Exchange 2013 RTM setup on Windows 2012, the installation process of an Exchange 2013 RTM mailbox and client access, and the basic first configuration steps. Instal installation steps are taken from the blogs and sites in this list. What do you need to know before we begin? Microsoft Exchange Server 2013 RTM consists of these server roles. Mailbox Server Role. This role stores mailbox data, performs processing, and covers up for client connections that are proxied by the client access server. Mailbox servers can be organized into back-end clusters that use database availability groups. Client Access Server Role. This role accepts mail from and delivers mail to other mail hosts on the Internet. This role also proxies connectivity for all clients, such as Outlook, OWA, mobile devices, POP, and SMTP. Note, you must install at least one mailbox and one client access server in an Active Directory site. You can install both roles on the same server. Prepare Active Directory and Domains. There are a series of requirements for Active Directory preparation to be successful. Schema master running Windows Server 2003 with SP2 or a later version of Windows Server. At least one global catalog server per site that Exchange will be installed in that is running Windows Server 2008 or later. At least one domain controller per site that Exchange will be installed in that is running Windows Server 2008 or later. The fullest functional mode of Windows Server 2003 or higher. An account with schema admins, domain admins, and enterprise admins permission to run Exchange setup. Because the Active Directory preparation requires the RSAT ADDS tools, I am running it on the domain controller in my test lab, running setup from the Exchange 2013 installation media. Alternatively, you can install the tools on a member server to run Exchange 2013 Active Directory preparation. From a command prompt window, run the following command, setup backslash ps backslash I accept exchange server license terms. From a command prompt window, run the following command. Setup backslash, backslash P open bracket backslash on colon open caret organization name closed caret closed bracket backslash I accept exchange server license terms. From a command prompt window, run the following command. Run setup backslash prepare all domains or setup backslash pad to prepare all domains in your organization. Installing Exchange Server 2013 prerequisites on Windows Server 2012. Exchange Server 2013 can be installed on Windows Server 2012 Standard or Data Center Edition. Installing prerequisites for an Exchange Server 2013 Mailbox or Mailbox and Client Access Server. For a Windows Server 2012 server that will host either the Exchange 2013 Mailbox Server role or both the Mailbox and Client Access Server roles, the following PowerShell commands is used to install the required server roles and features. Next, install the following software in this order. Unified Communications Managed API 4.0 Runtime. Microsoft Office 2010 Filter Pack 64-bit. Microsoft Office 2010 Filter Pack SP1 64-bit. Installing Exchange Server 2013 using the Setup Wizard. After installing the prerequisites, a restart of the server may be required. If you proceed without restarting, then Setup may be unable to proceed when it detects the pending restart. From the location where you have stored your Exchange 2013 files, run setup.exe. The first dialog gives you the opportunity to check for updates to the Setup files before you proceed. 
check for updates to Exchange 2013 setup files. After the setup files have updated, click Next to continue. Click, click Next to continue past the introduction message. Exchange 2013 setup introduction. Accept the license agreement and click Next to continue. Exchange 2013 license agreement. Choose whether or not to enable error reporting and click Next to continue. Configure Exchange 2013 error reporting. After a check that all the prerequisites are installed, the setup wizard will move on to the next step automatically, if the check was successful. Now we can choose the server roles to install. If this is the first server you're installing, Microsoft recommends you install the mailbox server role first. This can be either a mailbox only server or a combined mailbox client access server. Choose the Exchange 2013 server roles to install. Verify that you have enough disk space for the next installation or choose a path that does have enough disk space and click Next to continue. Choose the location to install Exchange 2013. If there is no existing Exchange organization in Active Directory and you haven't already prepared Active Directory for Exchange, you will be prompted to enter an Exchange organization name. When installing the mailbox server role, you are given the option to disable malware protection. If you disable it now, you can enable it again later. Configure anti-malware protection for the mailbox server. Some readiness checks are performed. If this is not the first server you're installing and there is no send connector defined for outbound email, then you may see a warning, but you can still proceed with the server installation. Setup can't detect a send connector with an address space of asterisk mail flow to the internet may not work properly. Exchange 2013 setup prerequisite warning. When you are ready to proceed, you can click install to begin. Begin the installation of Exchange 2013. The install is a fairly lengthy process, so you may want to go and do something else while you wait. When setup has finished, click Finish. Basic configuration of Exchange. Open the Exchange management shell and use the following command. Get ECP virtual directory FL URL. Copy the internal URL to your browser. This is the URL to Exchange Administration Center, EAC. Log in to EAC using your administrative credentials. Navigate to Mailflow tab. Click on Send Connectors. This wizard will create a send connector. Choose a name for your send connector and the type you would like to use in your organization, internal or internet. Click on Next. Choose the MX record associated with receipt domain option and click on Next. Under Address Space, click on the plus sign. In the Add Domain window, make sure SMTP is selected in the Type field. In the Fully Qualified Domain Name field, enter asterisk and click on Save. Make sure it isn't selected and then click Next. In the Source Server windows, click on the plus sign. In, in the Select a Server window, you need to select a mailbox server that will be used to send mail to the Internet via the Client Access Server. After you've selected the server, click on Add and then click on OK. Configure the accepted domains. Verify the receive connectors. Configuring certificates using EAC. 
open the EAC and navigate to Servers, Certificates. I'm using a wildcard certificate from a third-party public CA that I've exported from another server. From the Certificate Overview, select the newly added certificate and click Edit. On the Properties page, select Services and select the appropriate service, for example, IIS. Afterwards, click Save. Configure Site URLs, Databases, and Outlook. Go to Servers, select Virtual Directories. Configure the sites with the external URL and other settings. Verify that the certificate is installed and configured correctly by browsing to Outlook web app from an external client. This should not throw a certificate warning. Try to send and receive mail. That's the end of this webcast. Thank you for your kind attention.